what's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about UK versus US word differences. Apparently, even though America and the UK both speak English, there are times when we look at the same object, the same thing, and we call it a completely different word. I'd love to know, honestly, why that is. What, what's the history behind some of this stuff? It, it's like our, our two nations speak 99% the same, and then we go and call trousers pants, or pants trousers, and no one knows what's going on. So today, I am very interested in learning about 17 differences between UK and US words. Let's take a look. So the first word I have for you, and I'm going to start out with the U.S. word just because I'm American, oh. is sunscreen. So sunscreen. in the U.S., we say lather up your sunscreen. Make sure you have sunscreen. Sunscreen? <laughs> sunscreen? Really? Sunscreen? Gosh, this stuff is random. Um, do people in the U.K. not know what sunscreen is? Are you not familiar with sunscreen? The word. I'm sure you have sunscreen. You know, that stuff. That lotion that you rub all over your body to protect yourself from the sun. Suntan lotion. Um, what's, what is this called in the UK? I didn't know this, this could be different. Screen before you go outside. They don't call it sunscreen in the UK. They call it sun cream, which I guess makes sense. It is a cream. Sun cream? <laughs> sun, <laughs> sun cream? I don't know why that's funny to me. That's so... That's so interesting. Like, what a random object to be different. Sun cream almost sounds like something <laughs> you'd eat. I don't know. I guess as an Americans, we when we think of cream, that's a food, like sour cream. Cream. You put cream on your potatoes or something. <laughs> so, somehow lotion is just built into my brain or sunscreen. We call it sunscreen or suntan lotion. Sun cream, I would have had no idea what sun cream was if I just randomly had heard that. It sounds tasty, it sounds like a, a snack. <laughs> to protect from the sun, but also sunscreen does make sense because you're like screening yourself from the sun. Maybe that one doesn't make as much sense. <laughs> but anyway, they call it sun cream in the UK and sunscreen in the US. Wow. Now, the next word okay. is calendar. So in the US, a cal what? Calendar? This is this is going to be the whole video. It's just me going, "What? Huh?" Because but seriously, I can't believe this is like very normal everyday words and objects. Um that I have never imagined were called something else in the UK. A calendar, you know, that thing with all the, as the dates and the months and the dates. You gotta, you know, write your appointments on your calendar. What could that, what else could that be called? Calendar is something that looks like this. Yeah. This is actually a Florida calendar that one of my what? very, very, very nice readers sent me this winter um, because they knew I- How? What could this be called in the UK? I have no idea. I was missing home. And so currently I'm looking at a picture of Mayaka River State Park. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what's the word. Say. I've never been there, but what's the word? Well, anyway, I'm getting on lots of tangents today. Hi, hello. Stay on point. Okay, so this is a calendar. Right. Now, British people might call this a calendar, but okay. also when they're referring to putting dates on the calendar, they say they're going to write it in their diary. So they use diary. Di this is so fascinating. This is so fun. What? So, okay. Uh, people from the UK ha have heard the word calendar. You're familiar with calendars. Okay. Phew. Okay. I can breathe easy. Okay. There is some <laughs> sense in this world. Not everything is <laughs> not as I thought. Um, but the weird thing is, at least weird from my American point of view, but normal if you're from the UK, is calling it a diary. Here in America, a diary is a totally different thing. That's like a journal. That's like something you write your private thoughts into. 
uh, like a diary. Okay. It's the word diary to kind of mean how an American would say calendar or how an American might say schedule. I'm going to put that in my schedule. Schedule, schedule. Yes, yes. We would say schedule. I'm sure people in the UK say schedule and calendar, right? But you use diary in a different way. I did not know that. I would not have known someone in the UK was talking about a calendar if they said diary. That's good to know. Schedule, I'm gonna put that on the calendar. They say, I'm gonna put that in the diary. Oh. And to an American, this sounds really funny yeah. because yeah. in the US, the only usage really of the word diary is something that you would write in kind of like, um, you know, as a teenager to- Yeah, like a journal. Like it's a book where you just write your private thoughts. No one else is meant to see it. Like talk about the boys that you like and you put <laughs> it in your diary. It's something that's like secret and private. Um, you could have a diary just as you go through life, but it's, it's about your personal experiences and things that- This is so interesting. Um, <laughs> so far, we've only gotten through two of the words and I had no idea idea they were different in the UK. This is so interesting. Happened. It's not a schedule. So if someone at work says, hey, are you free for a meeting at 3 p.m. tomorrow? And a British person says, sure, I'll put it in my diary. It's very awkward okay. thoughts go through your head as you're trying <laughs> to figure out why. That, yeah, that, would, that would make no sense to an American. But now th to this American, now I get it. I understand. I, this business meeting, could potentially be going in this British person's private secret diary. <laughs> now, the next difference, and this is very topical, is in the US, we typically say we're going to get a shot. And that relates to, like, the vaccine. So, how many people have had their shots? I'm going... A shot. Yeah. Like a needle with stuff in it that goes into you at the doctor. A shot. What could this be called in the UK? A pokey poke. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. To get the shot. In the UK, I've never heard anybody say shot. Really? They say jab. You're going to get your jab. You're going to get jabbed up. The A jab? A jab? Man, that's funny because that's sometimes that's used in the United States as like a derogatory term for a shot. Like, if you don't like shots, you're like, oh, uh, they're, I, I'm going to let them jab me. Uh, you don't hear that very often at all. Almost never. And it's in a negative way here, if you, if you do hear jab. So that's the default in the UK. Yes, this is for sure different. In America, we say shot. You got to go get your shots. That's, wow. This is so, this is just all stuff I've never learned about. Very cool. And definitely this word sounds a little bit funny to me because it seems a bit like whimsical for something that, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I get it. Like, I understand. Like, jab. You're getting jabbed with the needle. Like, okay. It seems to me like very clinical and medical. It kind of makes it, maybe makes it a bit more accessible. But they all say they're going to get their jabs. And in the US, we say we're going to get our shot. Yeah, what would, what would the medical term be? Like, uh, an injection? basically, but we say shot. Now, the next one has to do with the kitchen. In the US, we say saran wrap or plastic wrap. And I know saran wrap is, I think, yes. a brand name. <laughs> Sar even saran wrap, plastic wrap in the kitchen, even that is a different thing. Why is it the most random, random things imaginable that we call different words between the US and UK? Who knows, but it's very entertaining. But we would say saran wrap or plastic wrap, something wrap. Okay. In the UK, they do not say saran wrap, plastic wrap, any wrap. They say cling film. So that is another- Cling film? <laughs> cling film? Uh, okay. Honestly, it's funny because that literally does make sense. It's clingy. It's film. Does ours make sense? Plastic wrap? I'm okay with either. Cling film. That's so literal, like cling, the cl I don't know why. That's also a funny one to me because it's so like exactly what it is. So I'm actually, I'm okay with that one. Cling film, 
other difference if you are in the grocery store or supermarket in the UK as an American, you will be asking for and looking out for the cling film okay. as opposed to the saran wrap. And again, when okay. I'm trying to compare the two, let's say I'm talking about plastic wrap. Um, plastic wrap, something that you wrap things in plastic. Yeah, that makes sense. And <laughs> She's doing it too, where it's like, does it make sense? Like, do we need to change or does the UK need to change? Uh, in this circumstance, I think both make sense, actually. Also, cling film, a film that clings to things. I think both of these are acceptable. How does this kind of thing happen? That That's another question I have. I don't think it's ever going to be answered. How does this kind of thing happen? It's just like our two nations are far apart. We both, like... People in the UK saw this thing and they're like, cling film, cling film. And we Americans stumbled upon it and we're like, oh, oh plastic wraps, plastic wrap. Is, is, that, is that how it happens? Well, and make roughly the same amount of sense. Okay, the next one is in the US, we would say movie theater. And in the right. UK, they would say cinema. So, okay. Okay, I think I've heard this before. <laughs> this is this is a this is a good one. Like it's very interesting because there are words Americans hear, like cinema. Like I've heard British people say the cinema, and that makes sense enough that we understand it. But it just sounds fancy. That's where there's like the Americans have a stereotype that uh, people from the UK are fancy. Because you say words like cinema, like not the, not the movie theater. I'm going to the cinema. Cinema is a fancy word here in America. And that's the default in the UK. It's, it's, it's really quite funny. Oh, this kind of goes along to the next one I have on my list. So I'll just jump to it right away. Okay. In the US, we typically say movie. In the UK, I... Movie. So people in the UK, I think, say film. I hear them say a lot more film, film. instead of movie. That, this is interesting because Americans would understand this. There's a lot of stuff we've talked about, uh, like cling film, <laughs> that I would not have understood. If even if I heard the word, I'd be like, I don't, I don't know what we're talking about. Jabs and cling film, but uh, this stuff, it's like Americans at least understand the word enough. It's just not what we would use. We'd be like, cinema, like a movie theater? Why, why are you being so fancy? And film, I'm going to watch a film, is much more proper and fancy than saying, I'm going I'm to watch a movie. So uh, that, that's interesting. That, that's kind of funny for me to think about. Now, I'm not saying that they don't say both words in either country. I'm sure if you're a Brit, you may have called something a movie. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm sure Americans, you know, we refer, we refer to the film industry, filmmakers and yeah. all of that. Yes. But if you're inviting, if you're talking about what you're going to do tonight, in the U.S., we would often say, uh, we're going to the movie theater or, oh yeah, we're going to make dinner and watch a movie. Yeah. In the U.K., yeah. I think it would be much more common to say, uh, we're going to go to the cinema or you're going okay. to say, oh, yeah, we're going to sit down and watch a film. So that's that's funny. It's like that's the default in our two different countries. That, it's cool, though. <laughs> I wonder what people in the UK think of the word movie and uh, movie theater. Um, does that sound strange to you? Like, how often do you use that compared to cinema and film? I wonder. It's just different ways to refer to it. Okay, for the next one, we're heading on the open road. In the U.S., we say truck, and in the U.K. What? Trucks are not trucks in the U.K.? What? A t what else would you call a truck? A truck's a truck. Truck, the, one of the most American things, a pickup truck. What? They, they say lorry, um, and that's another one where I really haven't heard. Lor lorry? Lori? Like a woman's name? Lori? In human resources? Lori? <laughs> in, in the human resources department at work? Lori? I've never heard that. Uh, why? Where, where does that one come from? There, like, the word truck, does it exist in the UK at all? 
learning about this stuff just raises a thousand more questions in my mind. Uh, Lori, that, that is probably the strangest one on this entire list so far. Heard many Brits say the word truck. Americans wouldn't even know what a lorry was unless no. they had some context clues. I certainly didn't before. No, 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 no. Like, some of this stuff is like, okay, I've heard of a film. Never, <laughs> never heard of a lorry. And I'm a little surprised, you know. Amer we, we Americans take in a little bit of, like, British media, uh, films, and TV. Never heard of a lorry. No. Moving here. But definitely an American would pretty much exclusively say a truck and not just to mean like a pickup truck, but a long truck. And okay. in the UK, they would call a very long kind of uh, a hauling sort of truck. They would call that a lorry. Oh, this is a semi truck. In, in America, we call it a semi truck which is, and it's distinctly different than a truck or a pickup truck. Big old truck on the highway, like hauling cargo. We call it a semi-truck. People in the UK call it a lorry. Okay, okay. Okay, another one that can create some funny <laughs> moments when you're in a cross-cultural relationship and trying okay. to figure out what each other means is the word flashlight in the US. Flashlight? Here we I swear, I'll say it again. This is the most random collection of words ever. A flashlight? A flashlight's not a flashlight. What could it, it what could, like a, what would you call it? A light beam or something? I don't even know. They do not say flashlight. They say torch. Now, torch, torch. I'm gonna get out the torch. Well, that, that, Yes, Americans would have no idea what you're talking about. A torch is like a thing. A torch is a like a stick with fire on the end of it, like the Olympic torch. A stick with fire. <laughs> In the UK, it's a flashlight, an electrical stick with a light bulb on the end. Yes, okay. Okay. I don't know if I can accept that one because a torch is a thing already in America. It has its definition. This this is just confusing for Americans. A torch to an American is like a flaming torch. So yes. when your husband is like, oh, can you get me the torch so that I can see, I don't know, into my computer because I'm fixing it, you know, whatever. He's taking something apart and he's asking for a torch. I'm like, <laughs> do I? <laughs> it's, yeah, it sounds funny from like an American point of view, to be like, I need to see in the computer, can you bring the torch over? Because <laughs> to us, that's a big flaming stick that's on fire. I, no, we do not, I'm not gonna bring you a, an open flame torch. <laughs> First of all, we don't have that. Second wow. of all, what, are you crazy? He meant flashlight. Um, so if you right. were ever asked for a torch in the UK. Flashlight is a torch. That is another important one to know. Because there, there's a couple here where people in the UK refer to objects with a word that already exists in America that means something else. So this can get a bit confusing. Okay, they do not expect you to like find the nearest tiki torch from your backyard. <laughs> They're just looking for a simple flashlight. You okay. know, the next. Okay, well, uh, I see here we're only like halfway done with this, and uh, I'm not going to drag this on for too long. I think I'm going to stop here for now and continue the rest of this in part two. But I am enjoying this quite a bit. If, if you've enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in part two of this, or just more videos like this in general, me reacting to the UK, and UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.